Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and a post-election autopsy. We have Harley Schlanger here, and you've got to read a report to start off with the beginning. I want to do what I call an analysis and, and uh, consequences uh, from this election, and there's a lot of things to learn. Again, one of the things that's important is that we're always in a learning process, and we also have to learn from our mistakes. Obviously, the Republican Party didn't learn from 2008, and uh, they will cease to exist as a party if they continue doing the same stupid mistakes they've done in the past. Uh, let's go through what they did right and what they did wrong, and let's well, read and this rep- this report that you have from uh, Linda LaRouche. Yeah, let me start with a statement just issued by Mr. LaRouche, who had basically said after the third debate where Romney d- showed that he was not going to insist on the truth on Benghazi, that lack of courage lost the momentum. And exactly. so what, here's, here's the slightly broader, it's, it's very short, but what he said, what happened? The yeah, Republican uh, the, candidate capitulated to Wall Street. That yeah. is, the Republican Party is strongly represented in Wall Street and where he could have easily won the presidency on points by simply going at the question of the crime committed by the incumbent president and failing to do that under pressure from Wall Street. The thing was lost. It was touch and go from that point on, and eventually it was lost. It was lost because of fraud by the Obama crowd and so forth. At the point, it became a lost cause because the Republicans capitulated on what was given to them. Then he says, what are the consequences of the re-election of this president? Well, first of all, it means you're going to have the most terrible conditions the American people have had in the past centuries, which will suddenly hit. What's going to hit is a combination of austerity and hyperinflation. What's going to happen is the death rate in the United States among poorer people and others will increase. Nothing good as such will come out of this election result. And then he said, what's the reality? The reality is the likelihood of thermonuclear war, which could mean virtual human extinction, will probably occur unless we can prevent it by other means. We're headed for war. The Obama administration is a war administration, and if it can't be blocked in some way, it will happen. Now, I just got a report from Mrs. LaRouche, who was talking with people, key people in Switzerland today. And what she said is that David Cameron, the British Prime Minister, who's coordinating with Tony Blair and Obama, was just in the Middle East selling arms to the Saudis and Qatar that are going to provide money for Britain, but the arms are going straight to Syria. Right. What, there's a conference in Doha right now to create a new Syrian opposition, and that traitor Hillary Clinton is presiding over it. And then what Cameron said this afternoon, and Tony Blair said the same thing, is that now that Obama is reelected, we can finally get peace in the Middle East by bringing down Assad and dealing with the Iran problem. Then we can deal with Israel and the Palestinians. That is a war policy from the British Empire dictated to their puppet, Barack Obama. And that's what Mr. LaRouche is concerned about with this election that just passed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and quite, I think quite, from, quite, what, quite you and I were just, from what you and I were just discussing, I think we have a lot of important points to make, but I'll tell you where I think the Republican Party missed it mostly. This line that Obama is a socialist is, is first of all, completely insane because he's a corporate fascist. But by arguing that Obama's for big government and the Republicans want to get rid of government, look what they just did. We have so many people now, 47 million on food stamps, 23 million unemployed who are hoping someone will create jobs and that they will keep their unemployment coming. We have the storm that just hit the East. There's a need for government. You can't just say we've got to get rid of all government. You've got to have, as you said, a a guarantee of a social safety net as well as a program to get people to work and get people to be able to take care of themselves. But to just trash government in the abstract the way the Republicans did and say that business methods will be enough. They tried to sell uh, us dirty fascism as a reasonable alternative to people that are already on food stamps, don't have work or have training in a degree. And can't afford medical care. And and, and can't afford and they're saddled with massive debt. And then a lot of the young people are going back to school so they don't have to pay the debt because they can't find a job. So they're taking off the unemployment rolls because they're back in school, accumulating even more debt for, for training for jobs that don't exist. And then you have, on top of that, Obama lying about an economic recovery 
The only thing that's recovered is really the stock market, uh, be, and that's because of the hyperinflationary bailouts. And the numbers of jobs that have been created are marginal. They're marginal jobs. Most people know that, they're, that there's no recovery, but they put out a lying story. And finally, they cover it up completely, not just what happened in Benghazi, but the bigger issue, which is that Obama has the United States in an alliance with Saudi-backed al-Qaeda forces in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen. And so even while he's killing them with drones, he's arming them in Syria. And so by covering this up, by lying, and by the, the other, it's, it's, I, I think we just have to say this also, Bill, a lot of the American people are just ignorant. They don't take the time to figure out what's hitting them. And they're easy to manipulate. And the Republicans thought all they had to do was tell the truth about the economy, which, you know, Romney didn't do a bad job telling the truth about the economy, but he didn't present an alternative. Right. Well, what we have is a situation that I think is uh, a little disgusting. What they did is they took a naive public that's distressed in the middle of a depression, not a recession, because when you have three negative quarters, you have a depression. And uh, what people need to understand is just how desperate the situation is. In fact, uh, what I've done is I, I wrote a little uh, article that kind of analyzes exactly what kind of points we can kind of look at here in terms of what actually is, you know, the issues and what happened. Because I, I looked at this last night before I went to bed, and I thought, I'm going to write... Uh, a kind of, uh, you know, a, a brief summary of it. And the first one is, number one, if your Republican Party has to a great extent, your base is for the Christian uh, right, you're not going to get a Mormon, especially one with aspects of Asperger syndrome that doesn't show true emotionality to get the conservative Christian vote. And we know that the 60% of the Catholics voted for Obama. We know that there was also a gender gap. Number two, uh, you can't be nice, like you said, uh, and get the presidency when you know that you're, uh, know the facts about the other guy, which is Obama, doing incompetent or criminal activities, such as Benghazi, Libyan war, and no congressional designation. Number three, Sandy, of course, we know, uh, stopped the Romney surge. Number four, you have to deal with real solutions for the Hispanic population and not make stupid statements like self-deportation. Uh, you know, you gotta come up with a concrete solution to deal with these people in a real way. Number four, you must offer real solutions to, to, to uh, other issues such as a recession and not threaten people that their social safety net will, will be torn apart. Uh, it just, you can't do that. Uh, and, uh, of course, and that's, that's what the... That, you see, and that's really where you see the disservice done by people like Rush Limbaugh and Hannity and others who don't distinguish between a bailout... Uh, policy run by the Obama administration that benefits the bankers and the corrupt uh, fraudsters versus a redistributionist program. When you redistribute wealth to the richest, that's not socialism. And that is something the Republicans could have gone with Glass-Steagall. There were rumors that Ryan was even thinking about it, but by ignoring these issues, they just fell into a trap. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. Yeah, you can. the The Libertarian Party is a, is a geopolitical anomaly. It's ridiculous. Uh, you can't sell austerity fascism. It's not selling in Greece. It's not selling in in Spain. And when you have austerity like this to a population, you're going to have riots. Now, if 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 you if you try to sell a uh, Ryan, which is a different version of the you know the Libertarian or the Tea Party, it's not going to work. You can't balance the budget. In fact, the mathematicians have worked it out that if you tax the entire income of the so-called people that make things in America, you'd only be able to run government and give all the handouts to everybody else for about 93 days. So what we have is an inflatocracy. We talked about this yesterday with the author of the book, uh, The, the uh, Great Depreciation, with uh, Lowell Ponte and... This is what we're dealing with, is we don't have people that know mathematics and balancing the books. You can't harm people, when, and you can't crush government, which may be their only safety net. And you have an announcement, Harley. Uh, then we'll continue with this list of, uh, you know, real solutions. You know, we got to deal with real people. The problem is that, uh, you know, like the uh, 
like the the uh, the Tin Man that had to have a heart. Well, the Republicans need us to have a heart transplant. Uh, uh, you can't have a stir. Yeah, they need to be like the Tin Man when needing a heart transplant because it's just ridiculous. First off, in the middle of a recession, depression, you don't destroy the safety net. You don't have people raising the costs across the country of education and trying to compete with third world countries where these young people in the third world are studying like crazy in their little grass huts and stuff, and they're becoming IT specialists and engineers. More engineers graduated in China last year that all the engineers and all the PhDs in North America just in Beijing so we're stupid and we're getting stupider and if we don't decide to invest in our young people in infrastructure in actual uh, things like Nawapa and and and, and advance our, our culture and our society so it's it's really a great thing to come to America and that we, we have medical tourism because we have the most advanced medicine, the most advanced technology make it attractive for people of any color of any nation who has these high tech skills to come here instead we have people like uh, Romney saying talk about self deportation, no that's not rational and it's not rational to just say a carte blanche we're just going to accept anybody that wants to come to America either what we need to do is have rapid immigration policy that doesn't allow criminals in this country, including those that serve one or two terms in the military, as their in-card to get inside the United States, and then they work for drug uh, cartels in the U.S. and Los Angeles and Phoenix and elsewhere as arms of the of the Sinaloa cartel or whoever, whatever else. So, well, you know, let's, yeah, let's, let's, do, let's do your announcement next, but I, I think I, well, people like need to grasp with this Hispanic issue is one of the... I think they lost the election on on abusing uh, Hispanics, abusing women, and I'm, I, and I'm talking about the idea that they should have you know, equal wages for equal work. Number two, abortion is killing, period. But we can need to have birth control in terms of non-abortive uh, control so women don't have to be continually pregnant either. Uh, well, it doesn't help when you have so-called pro-life candidates defending uh, children born in rape victims. So I, I thought the yeah, well, I, yeah, Murdoch the first thing and wrote, Aiken hurt well, the it, Republican well, Party by making such well, the way he, he, it's the way he presented it. My pastor back in Canada was a product of rape and incest, so he's still a human being. The fact is that the human being status doesn't change on the way you were conceived. No, but the way the problem, it was presented... The way it was presented was just stupid. It was, I mean, a, hand, it was a gift to the Obama administration. Oh, yeah, listen, the they, picked up that, so they, they, they picked up the sound bite and realized, like, you know, women need to be treated with respect, and I'm also concerned for women because a lot of them voted for Obama, and a generation or so from now, because of increased toxins because Obama's not a real environmentalist. He also, the state wants to have, and he said it already in China when he visited there, he likes their one-child policy. These women think that they have control of their bodies. No, the state soon will have control of their bodies. And, in fact, reproduction a generation from now will be licensed at the well, rate things me, are let going. Me get to my, so, let me get to my yeah. announcement, because this is something yeah. that I think people will like. Uh, Diane Sayre, who many of you may remember, was a candidate for Congress in uh, northern New Jersey, announced today she's going to run as an independent against Governor Chris Turncoat Christie yeah, uh, right. in the 2013 New Jersey governor's race. Now, Christie is being lionized by the pro-austerity press for his austerity policy, but then he embraced Obama yeah. during the hurricane, embraced him for what? For showing up. He didn't do anything. In fact, uh, the people are still starving in the dark there in, in New Jersey. It's just obscene what's going on. They didn't bring in generators. They didn't bring in helicopters. They didn't bring in uh, all the things that you know that they should have pre-deployed nearby within a matter of hours that could have brought in by heavy lift helicopters. Well, absolutely. If, it, absolutely. If, this was a deployment, if this was a deployment to Afghanistan or a theater of war, they could have done this in a matter of hours, and those people would have all season tents, food and water, uh, ways of heating MREs, they would have a place where they can go potty without doing it in apartments or the street. It's just disgusting that the way that Obama prances around and puts his hands in his pockets and asks like a real old boy. And then Christie embraces him and says, oh, you're doing a great job. No, he's not doing a great job. Christie is a kiss-ass. And well, this is not Christie, good. Christie is someone who's got to be removed. The problem is the Democrats aren't going to put up someone who will remove him. And the Republicans won't either. So Diane is going to run as an independent because what's needed now is that in selected areas, we've got to have independent candidates who are going to have to do some work to get on the ballot because yeah, in most states you have to petition if you're not in a major party. Right. But I think we're now ready because the two parties failed. 
they both put up candidates who were inadequate. In the case of Obama, someone who's essentially a beast. In the case of Romney, someone who just didn't have what was needed. The Republican field was weak. Uh, and the parties themselves, instead of there. looking for solutions, are going for party unity. Well, so no, no, no. Let, let me give you the diagnosis of what I've seen and I've seen on the party. This is like a I call a medical diagnosis of the political, uh, as they say, the 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 gangrenous necrosis of the body politic of republicanism. Number one, the top levels of the Republican Party are bisexual pedophiles. Number two, they couldn't tolerate a real Christian conservative that had compassion for the women, compassion for the Hispanics, whether they're here legally or illegally, and, and for compassion for the elderly by really controlling costs in health care so you don't start telling Granny, we can't afford it because we didn't control costs and, and a, a frivolous lawsuits, so we're going to pull the plug. So instead... We had empty solutions and uh, platitudes about jobs when the real issue isn't jobs, it's whether I'm going to have dinner tonight and I'm going to have a warm bed to sleep in and a roof over my head. And Obama doesn't even, he postures, but he doesn't even provide it. And what's happening is right now, temporarily, he should have in the first two years put in a rapid immigration policy. I guarantee you that he'll posture and try to blame it on the Republicans, but if he reached across the aisle and the Republicans had two clues, they know that they have to now deal with these issues, but they, they better not have their head up their butt and start dealing with the fact we need a, like Marco Rubio already had a plan laid out of how to deal with all the people that want to be Americans. And by the way, maybe Americans are living in China right now and India that have PhDs in engineering. We want those people but, here. But Dr. Deagle, let me, let me say something here, because this is the problem, problem with partisanship. The right. Republicans, the, the Democrats made a big mistake in right. 2006 by not going after Bush. Pelosi, in fact, said impeachment's off the table because yeah. they wanted to win the 2008 election. So they used the crimes of Bush and Cheney to elect Obama. Now, the Republicans did the same damn thing, because Cantor and Boehner said impeachment is not on the table. And as a result, we ended up with a, uh, an Obama administration. The right, Republicans yeah. were so convinced they could beat him in the election. They ran a horrible election campaign. They presented no alternatives. And they spent a lot Obama of money, too. Is, but They don't spend yeah, the Democrats, almost, and they still screwed it up. Almost six billion dollars spent on the election cycle yeah. this time. Right. Now, and here's the problem: Obama was involved in criminal complicity in what happened in Benghazi, not right. just because of Benghazi, but going back to the original Libya. Oh, Libya! Uh, going right back to the real regime change. They don't. And then he says in public, on the news, on camera. We don't even need to have Congress tell us about act of war. We're going to actually declare an act of war if we hear from NATO and the United Nations. Duh. And then he covered up. He covered up what happened at Benghazi, and he's covering up our alliance with Al Qaeda. So impeachment has to be put on the table right now, as John right. McCain finally said the other night. Well, you know, you elect a new president or a second-term president, and then you put him on the impeachment. What next? Fiscal Cliff is coming. Much more back in a moment. Welcome back. And uh, again, the websites are Roosh Foundation is L A R O U C H E P A C dot com for the Roosh Pack and lots of videos and materials from Linda LaRouche and Friday reports coming up this Friday, which is the 9th. He'll have another one on the Friday evening. And uh, LaRouchePUB.com for the Executive Intelligence Review. And there's a number to call if you want more information 800 922 2907. 800 922 2907. Harley, you have a couple of other announcements. Go ahead. Well, I think this is in keeping with what Mr. LaRouche said, that besides the hyperinflationary bailout and the austerity fascism, the other policy is war. Now, what's happening yesterday and today in Doha, which is this uh, fabulous uh, skyscraper city in the middle of the, the United Arab Emirates desert, uh, there's a conference presided over by the British Foreign Secretary Haig and Hillary Clinton, and they're trying to reorganize the Syrian opposition. They're trying to, to decide who more... even belongs to it. They're, they're even well, trying they're to trying select to... out who... They're trying to actually call out and decide who is the opposition, which is a direct Western interference in the whole process, because what's really going on is 80% of the weapons go to Al-Qaeda, our supposed death, blood enemies, yet these idiots try to continue to apologize for the situation. 
Well, they're trying to get people who are acceptable to Western media, who look like they might be pro-Western frontmen, uh, who then would, as Cameron said, with Obama winning a second term, now we can up the pressure on Syria. Now, what happened in the last two days is al-Qaeda suicide bombers took out 50 Syrian soldiers who were involved in, in humanitarian efforts in an area where the rebels had gone into a part of Damascus, a poor part of Damascus, and shot people up. When the Syrian army came in, they hit them with a suicide bomb. They assassinated the brother of the Speaker of the Syrian National Assembly. They assassinated the most popular television uh, star in Syria, who's a friend of Assad. Uh, they're conducting purges to drive Christians out of the uh, northwest side of Aleppo. And they've, they've cut off water again to that area where the, it's a predominantly Christian area. And so this is, and in the meantime, arms are coming from the Turkish border provided by the Saudis, the British, and the United States. Well, they got more contracts. You know, you didn't, you know darn well that uh, the Prime Minister of Britain just finished a great big British military arms contract to ship more arms. It's going to provide more income for the British, more arms for Al-Qaeda, our CIA proxies there doing regime change. And what I heard, the latest thing, is not only was this a botched uh, kidnapping and a swap for the blind shake that was occurring with uh, Ambassador Stevens, but in fact he didn't agree with the current policy of arming Al-Qaeda and knew these people were dangerous, and because he didn't agree with it, and they were actually in the compound where the arms were being kept and shipped to... They let, him, they shipped, let him get killed. They, they let, let him get killed. killed. They, they said, this guy is not behaving himself. He's not, he's not acting like a good mobster. So even though he was one of our guys, we're going to let the sucker die. And they actually no. did this on purpose, and Obama never had to take answers. When I saw Romney not taking him to task in that third interview, I had to agree with... Uh, Joe Biden, who's a bit of a comedian, he said, you know, I don't know if if this is a debate or if he was just endorsing uh, Obama. I mean, it was just ridiculous. No, that, and now let me just add to this picture. The Israeli Institute of National Strategic Studies, based in Tel Aviv, just reported on Monday in Haaretz newspaper the results of a war game they conducted last the end of last month. The subject of the war game was an Israeli strike against Iran on November 9th. That's two days from now. Friday. And they came up with, with two conclusions. One, the U.S. will back Israel. And as a result, Iran will most likely have a mild response. Now, there was a minority report that came out and said, are these guys effing crazy? Iran's not going to respond to a strike? And the minority report went on to say, we will soon be in World War Three. Okay, let, let me give you the, the the four points I think will Iran will do. Number one, the Iran oil minister has already said if we continue to have further attacks and further financial uh, embargoes against us, we're just going to shut the strait. Number one, that means the world economy is going to crash. We're going to have a full force without the lies depression. Number two, Iran has EMP weapons. They can take out the east and west coasts of the United States 200 miles off the coast. That will happen. Number three, vials of lyophilized superbugs created by the biopreparate program in Russia are now in the possession of advanced biological weapons developers in Syria and Iran. They are going to come back from the back of the refrigerator in Chicago, Atlanta, New York, etc. And they're going to be sprayed in bus stations, train stations, and airports. Number four, Iran has the Shahib-3 missile. They can strike any capital inside Europe and every military base, and they have GPS coordinated targeting systems. And these so-called Iron Dome and uh, Patriot 2 systems that the Israeli have are leaky, which means our military bases, our naval things, ships are going to start going to the bottom and we're going to start seeing things like Yakon's hypersonic cruise or sunburn missiles take out our carrier groups and even if we release all we want, the Russians have got the S-400 system positioned north of the Turkish border and the S-300 system is in Damascus and we're going to start seeing our air assets our jets, our drones come up fly, falling out of the sky and then we're going to get a call on the red phone to Mr. Obama from Mr. Putin and the head of China saying we have nuclear missiles targeting you on either coast in the Guatemalan Mexican border and in Venezuela and you have so many minutes to stand down or else. Well, and let me add one other point to this scenario which is in the last 48 hours 
Putin replaced the existing defense minister of Russia, a man named Serdukov, who was considered to be not tough enough. And he brought in a general who was in charge of security for the Moscow district. In China, there's a shakeup of some sort going on, and the early reports are that they're bringing in several of the hardliners from the previous government on the military side, uh, because one of the things that's happening now is that Obama has announced the so-called Asia pivot. Now, the Asia pivot for Obama is anti-ballistic missile systems on the border. It's supporting the old Japanese imperial interests who are threatening to take over these islands that are in, that are uh, Chinese islands. But the other point of this is that at the same time he's threatening war, he's not doing anything to address some of the more serious problems that exist with China in terms of U.S.-Chinese relations. So the Chinese decided instead of dealing with this lunatic, they're going to take care of business. They told the Japanese that they're not going to put up with these uh, Japanese-American joint military maneuvers in the uh, Sea of Japan, which include planning to take these two rocks. I mean, they're just rocks. There's nothing on them that the right. Japanese they're not, imperialists they're, claim. They're not habitable. They don't even have what they think is there might be some oil in the, in a, in the oceans near it, but the, well, beyond it really that, there's has nothing. nothing to do with that. Ishihara, right. who's the former mayor of Tokyo, who's an unre... Re, uh, uh, he, he never gave up being a Japanese Hirohito imperial uh, supporter, is saying that Japan has to move aggressively, including possibly to cut off Taiwan from China. You know, this is, these are issues that were from the 50s that have been really resolved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So why Silly, is Obama, you know, remember Kamoi and Matsu, this was a John Kennedy, Richard Nixon debating topic. These are right. issues that have been settled. We don't need to be involved in those things. What we need to do is get our economy back on sound footing and get back with the science pro pro program. Now, that comes to the other point that you and I were discussing off the air. There was an asteroid that came within, I think, nine lunar distances from the United States on Election Day. Now, that sounds like it's pretty far away, but that's getting closer and closer. What they're discovering is there are more of these rocks between Venus and Mars that are heading in toward the Earth. And sooner or later, one of them is going to hit. You, you mentioned the date before you... Well, we have, we have a couple Mars. of asteroids. In fact, the third hour, every Wednesday, we have Professor uh, James McCanny on. And he's going to talk about this. We talked this morning. This uh, asteroid that's going to pass the Earth 197 meters across, could take out a city the size of the area the size of Luxembourg, will pass at less than 5,000 miles, but the distance keeps on getting estimated shorter and shorter. So there's a chance of less than 1 in 100 that it will strike the Earth on my birthday, February 15th, 2013, four months from now. These things are whipping past us all the time when we're doing nothing about it. Welcome back, and uh, yeah, it's pretty remarkable what's going on. Uh, Harley, the, the situation is actually the worst of all possible uh, futures. Uh, I made a little analysis, and I want people to kind of, and I want to just mention a couple of it, because I think it'll be a platform for kind of talking about the LaRouche Foundation approaches, which is solution-based, uh, you know, not based on the idea of being inhuman, the idea of abundance for everyone, the idea of uh, of not just a carte blanche for immigration, but a rapid immigration policy that doesn't allow criminals in the country. We don't have that. We have the both parties are basically a warmongering uh, for the big banks and globalism. We we don't see a policy. People believe the lies of of Obama because he presents himself, but he's, there's no substance there. And then we have Romney who comes out and says things that are just like, no, you didn't say that, did you? And, and, of course, then the, we know that the highest levels of the, of the Republican Party are rotten to the core. That's why they couldn't 
stand to have a conservative, compassionate Christian with Judeo-Christian ethics that would care about the uh, about jobs and about the young people not getting work and well, care I, about I, women I, and, I, and and that, that's that's the reason why. They failed. And, of course, I did that analysis of the data on Friday. I was more positive on Monday and Tuesday. I think, well, maybe I'll listen to, to Dick Morris and Carl Rove and think that, that there was enough energy there. But the fact is, you know, we're going to have as consequences four more years of gridlock. Gold well, hey, jumped thirty to three dollars, dollars yesterday, and we're gonna. Let, let me just finish just a bit. Yeah, U.S. Right. dollar devaluation is coming. It already dropped yesterday. The Fed Reserve is now going to print so much money: forty billion dollars to eighty billion dollars a month in mortgage-backed securities. These have countries uh, and counties across the country, which are basically Republican, are going to block legislation to allow their assets to be devalued and be given over to the Democrats. And so, what's going to happen is you're going to get further moral decay. Uh, further destruction of the middle class and of course Obama originally does want to eventually bring in population control the green agenda one child policies which if not in his term at some future term they'll look back and Obama said yeah he set the agenda so now women have all the rights to reproduce once the states license them and if people don't realize that's what's coming and Obama by the way supports genetically modified food I don't know if it passed but the industry put so damn much money in that Prop 37 doesn't look like it's going to make it we don't have real environmental policy on the part of Obama. We've got pseudo-environmentalism, the idea that he wants more nuclear, which is uh, dangerous. He doesn't deal with the fact they don't have backup generators. I mean, it just goes on and on. Obama is is a nightmare. And Romney, it was just incompetent. I mean, the idea of putting Romney up and figuring that he was going to make it when he's not a... With, with, the, with the libertarians and the Tea Party and the conservative Christians not voting for him, and then the gaffes and the statements he made, it's not surprising he didn't make it. Well, let me let me bring up one point that I think is is just worth looking at. As you know, I I am not a supporter of George W. Bush in any way, but right. one of the things that Bush did by talking about immigration reform is he got between 40 and 45 percent of the Hispanic vote, I think, in his second election. Right. If Romney would have had 30 percent of the Hispanic vote, he would have won. And right. the idea that, that it, it's not a question of pandering to the Hispanics, that's what Obama did. Just you be know, reasonable Obama, to them. Treat, just yeah, be reasonable. Exactly. Treat them with humanity. Treat them with some decency. Yeah. And, and recognize that, the, on the one hand, that many Hispanic, especially Hispanic Catholics, tend to be socially conservative. But they also are primarily concerned with jobs and protecting what they have, protecting right. their homes and things of that sort. But the real issue here, what it boils down to, is that we're in a great civilizational crisis. And most people know it. But in this election, no one articulated a plan to address the civilizational crisis. Instead, right. they went with nastiness, with uh, negative ads, and with really simple, stupid appeals to the popular opinion on, of, of small sections of the population. Uh, you know, for example, David Axelrod said, when they asked him, how did, you, how did you know you'd win the Ohio vote? He said, we had the names of every one of the early voters. What the Democratic Party did was tailor-make their emails to address, for example, auto workers, uh, wives of auto workers, daughters of auto workers, lesbian auto workers, you know, they had really refined lists. Now, this, of course, is pandering, and it wouldn't have worked if the Republicans would have had a policy. But right. this is how bad our they dropped the ball. They dropped the. And, and it's like in a game of basketball, you need to have a, a point guard that's going to get the ball down the, the court to pass to the tall guy that can that can dunk it. And we well, had no point the guard. One person, the one person who should have helped Romney was David Stern, the NBA commissioner, because I saw an interview with him the other day, and they said, isn't it good to have a president who's so committed to basketball? And Stern said, well, to tell you the truth, I've seen him play with some people, and they said, well, how is he? And Stern said, he's pretty bad. He's not anywhere near as good as he thinks he is. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so we have a president now who needs to be impeached. And, you know, some people are going to say, how can you say that he just won re-election? Well, he lied to win re-election. Well, not only that, he has a nation. The nation's more divided now than ever. I mean, uh, they, right. I, I can't see how they can say they're going to reach across. In fact, if anything, this next four years will be more divided. I see more vile 
gridlock. I see the fiscal cliff. It's like no one's putting on the brakes. They're putting on the pedal to the metal well, now for the fiscal Obama cliff. Obama may reach, he may reach across to shoot a drone at some of the Republicans. But, you know, the, the <laughs> thing that you're saying, which is real, is that we've got some serious crises that have to be settled. And the solution, what LaRouche has put forward with Glass-Steagall, with a credit policy, with projects like Nawapa, Space, and so on, we could do it. That's bipartisan. That's for America. That's for the future. And, you know, I, I think now that your listeners, you know, a lot of your listeners, I know this because some of them called me, and they said, well, look, I really don't have to support impeachment because Romney's going to win. I voted for Romney. Let me say to all those block-headed people who listen to your program who thought Romney was going to win and they didn't have to go out and organize and do anything, I hope you've learned your lesson. And if you want to call me now and say, okay, what do I do to sign up to get this impeachment, call me right now because we've got to wage this fight. And it's 800-922-2907. Many of you who did call backed away from doing anything, and a whole lot of you didn't call. So give me a call and let's get this fight done right this time. 800-922-2907. Yeah, exactly. Now what next, okay? What, what, what do you see as next? Because well, I want to hear what Mr. LaRouche says Friday night. He's going to do a webcast on LaRouchePack.com, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on, on Friday. I think from what he just wrote, what I read at the beginning of the show, which, by the way, is up on the LaRouche Pack website, I think what he's going to say is that we've got to take this Benghazi issue and move to have full investigation. And if Obama tries to block it the way Nixon did, then the Republicans have to get some honest Democrats and move him out. And what LaRouche said is that we know there are some Democrats who know that Obama is an impediment to government right now, and some of them who stayed with him or didn't fight him because of their fear about re-election no longer have to worry about that because he's not up on the ballot anymore. And in fact, yeah, and by the way, they run away from him. The Republicans have got such a large majority in the Congress now that Obama's going to get nothing done. And he'll blame it on the Congress because uh, he's going to block anything attempts that they have to do to try to deal with it. The Republicans, though, uh, aren't presenting what I call good new ideas. Well, let's, and get, let's get some Democrats in there to work with some of the Republicans and to work for the nation, not for the party. Exactly. What really needs to happen is what Romney was talking about, working across the aisle. But I see the first term of Obama, it's like the comments that were made by... Uh, one of the political pundits, and he said, you know, that's kind of like a, a, a dream that Obama is going to reach across the aisle and talk to Democrats, and they're going to work things out. It's not going to happen. You and know, so, one of the things that I like is that someone last night said when Obama ran four years ago, he was a symbol of hope. Today, he's a symbol of the limitations of hope. Well, I think what, it, what the, the problem is, he, he will, as this pundit said, if you agree with him, and his agenda, you're okay. And if you don't agree with him, he doesn't want to have anything to do with you, and he cuts your rate right off. Yeah. So uh, what I see happening is we're hitting toward the fiscal cliff. As I mentioned in my little summary here, which people can read, I said first term of Obama is dictator and liar-in-chief. Second term of Obama, false prophet and architect of America's Babylonian demise. Yeah. That sounds and right. We, yeah, and we need a. If we impeach the uh, devil, at least we'll be stuck with Biden, who can at least crack a few good jokes. And maybe we'll get a real election. And maybe now they'll finally have a rise of a real third party that cares about people, has fiscal responsibility, wants to build infrastructure, and will allow children and young people to get education and people that are seniors to be re educated for a new economy. But we don't have that with either of these parties, and certainly not the Libertarian or Constitution Party presented these ideas. 